Hello, everyone. My name is Adrian Vaccaro. I'm a software engineer with Fidelity Investments, and I am working in the public cloud platform team. We are working towards enabling our internal business units to safely and securely adopt cloud at scale. I'll give you an overview of why and how the Cron project started. We'll uh, deep dive into how it works, and we'll also have a look at some of the features it currently has. First of all, to better understand the CRAN and the need for it, you need to know that Fidelity is embracing a multi-cloud strategy. And the approach we took to achieve that was to build a multi-level platform on top of Kubernetes uh, and other CSCF technologies. We started to work on building conformity across all the platforms that a business unit may consume. Now, the goal of doing that was to achieve a consistent developer experience no matter what the platform, what platform the developers are using. In other words, if they are using Kubernetes and they, they deploy on top of Kubernetes, it's Kubernetes. So we work to eliminate uh, some of the complexities or differences between running Kubernetes on premises or running Kubernetes managed by a specific cloud provider. In this way, when an application developers want wants to deploy to the cloud, they shouldn't have to modify their applications uh, to suit uh, depending on the cloud provider they are trying to deploy to. While the focus is on the user experience, which is the application teams, the platform developer experience is also improved when working in layers. It allows for reusability of components and collaboration between different uh, business units and teams to improve the platform experience. For example, here, the security layer can be developed and tested by a dedicated team of cybersecurity specialists. Once a new version of this layer has been released, the platform developers can integrate that in their systems as a dependency. They will have the confidence that that layer was tested and certified to be working on a specific Kubernetes version and on all the cloud providers. Before we move on to the next slide, let's take a moment to look again at uh, the big picture here. So with the help of the color coded boxes, you will notice uh, that as a user of the platform, your experience would be very similar no matter what the underlying cloud provider is. Your application can leverage the same tools, the same services uh, and on each platform, and you can easily migrate your applications from one to the other with minimal or zero uh, development effort. Now that we've seen what the objective was, we needed to implement uh, a solution, uh, to find a solution to implement that. I think you might be wondering, why do we need another deployment tool to achieve that? So in the beginning of our cloud journey at Fidelity, we found ourselves constantly adding new features or as we call them add-ons to the platforms we were developing. So managing the deployment of those add-ons became more complex and harder to maintain as the system expanded. Uh, using Helm and Customize at the beginning works very well. Uh, you get a quick MVP, you, ha you have fast development lifecycle, and ultimately uh, you get working software. The problems start when you need to handle all the dependencies between add-ons, all the preconditions before installing or deleting an add-on, and, uh, and, and implementing remediation retries if something goes wrong and doesn't work as expected. For example, you, have, you might have applications or services that are depending on cert manager being installed before they can deploy correctly. Or you might want your OPA constraints to be in place before you deploy any other applications to your clusters. And so the list can go on. Cron comes into play when you need your suite of application to be deployed following some very specific business logic. It can simplify your deployment uh, logic, but it can also uh, speed up your deployment process by grouping those add-ons in layer, layers. Before we move on from this slide, uh, there is another thing it's worth mentioning here. So the difference between customized Helm and CRAN is that CRAN is a Kubernetes controller. So it's deployed inside the cluster and all the deployment logic, it's happening uh, in a reconciliation loop. Let's have a look at this example. So your deployment script could turn from what you see on the left side here, a lot of ifs, while loops, uh, to one single line with cron, qctl apply-f layers.yaml. 
Cron will then take care of all the prerequisites you defined in the layers manifest and only deploy your applications when they are ready. More than that, it will also reconcile your deployment application for further upgrades. All you need to do is define the layers, define the dependencies, and let Cron and Flux take care of the rest. Let's see uh, what's inside uh, the layers that YAML file. So two of the most important configuration options here are the source and the prerequisite sections. The source will reference a Git repository which contains the layers contents. These are helm release files inside the Git repository. All those helm release files will be installed as part of this layer. The prerequisite sections section is Cran's brain. Uh, it, it is what is driving Cran in applying those helm releases. They will only be applied, the helm releases will only be applied after all the dependencies here are fulfilled. One other thing to notice here is the, the version of the layer, but also notice that the version uh, it's used in the depends on property as well. This is what we call the version dependency system. The common layer here depends on the security layer at version 120. So unless this layer here, it's already deployed to the cluster, the processing of this layer won't start by, by CRAN. At this stage, all you need to know is that managing the prerequisite section wisely, combined with defining meaningful layers in the Git repository, can help you achieve even some of the most complex deployment scenarios. We'll deep dive into how everything works in the following slides. So let's see some technical details about CRAN in order to understand how the magic takes place. CRAN is built on top of the GitOps toolkit. It, it is using two of the key components of the Flux family of projects. Those are the source controller and the Helm controller. This means that on top of the features Cron brings to the table, you can take advantage of the previous experience of using the Flux projects. When deploying Cron to a Kubernetes cluster, you'll get the source and Helm controllers out of the box as well. They all work together to bring your cluster to the desired to desire state during each reconcile loop. To better understand how all these components interact, let's have a look at the following diagram. So the dotted lines here just separate the controllers from the resources they manage. We start from the bottom up. The crown controller reconciles add-ons layers. The add-ons layers construct is the only, the only manifest file that a user would add, uh, would directly apply to the cluster. Uh, everything else happens automatically. So as a user, uh, you apply the, the, the manifest, the, that add-ons layers manifest file to the cluster. And that add-ons layer contains a source reference, which is in fact a Git repository that is managed by the source controller. Inside the Git repository, in a source control uh, management system like GitHub, for example, there is a path that contains a bunch of Helm release files. Um, those are the manifest files that uh, CRAN will need and it will apply to the cluster. Once CRAN obtains a copy of those files from the source controller, it will apply those files to the cluster. And from here on, the Helm controller will react to this change and it will work together with the source controller to get the Helm charts from the Helm repositories and apply them to the cluster. Let's have a look at the Git repository and GitOps reconciliation. So because Crown is built uh, on top of the Flux projects, the source controller is the one that's handling all the GitOps operations. When defining the Git repository source for an add-ons layer, we have a choice of how we want to source the source controller to track that repository. For example, if we decide that our add-ons layer will track the develop branch of a Git repository, every time there is a new commit to that branch, uh, when the source controller reconciles the repository, the crown controller will pick up the changes and decide if there's something to do to bring that layer to the desired state. In this case here, you've seen there is a new add-on added. There is a new hand release added to the layer and it will be deployed uh, to the cluster. Everything happens automatically, uh, starting from the Git commit to the develop branch. The source controller pulls the latest changes from the Git repository. The crown controller gets a fresh copy of the files and notices the difference. 
It then proceeds to apply, move, or delete an add-on from the layer in order to bring it to the desired state. If you want to use, uh, if you want to track stable released versions of a layer, then a tag or a commit hash should be used. You have probably noticed how the version of the layer uh, is tightly coupled with the reference the Git repository is tracking. Besides playing an important role in the version dependency system, it also gives the visibility to the cluster administrator into what versions of each layer are deployed. The next slide will describe how an add-on can be configured. Familiarity with the Helm controller would be an advantage. If we simply put it this way, an add-on is just a Helm release. Here are some of the features the, the layer developers can take advantage of. So the remediation retries when installation or upgrades fail. Auto, they can automatically run Helm tests after each install or upgrade. Uh, they can provide dynamic values to the chart uh, using values from a config map inside a cluster. And they can also define dependencies on other Helm, Helm, Helm releases. Uh, just to clarify once again, when I'm talking about Helm releases, or when I'm talking about, I'm talking about an add-on, this is what is actually behind the hood. In other words, all the information, all the metadata about how an application should be installed. The application itself has to be packed as a Helm chart that is developed and maintained separately. Uh, let's now talk a bit more about uh, the business logic of CRAN, and we start with uh, how CRAN handles the dependency relationships. So the main construct that CRAN defines in an, is an add-on layer. And inside that add-on layer, there can be a number of different add-ons. But the most important piece of the business logic uh, is that you can define dependency relationships to from a layer to another layer or from a layer to a specific Kubernetes version. Let's take an example. So we have layer X and layer Y, uh, and we want to only install layer X if layer Y is available. But also, we don't want to install layer X if the Kubernetes cluster version is lower than 120, and we don't want to install layer Y if the Kubernetes cluster version is lower than version 121. This helps with reducing deployment complexity, deployment script complexity, and also gives developers confidence that the add-ons layers have been tested and certified to be working on a specific Kubernetes version. One other thing to notice here is the intra-layer dependencies that can be added with the help of Helm controller. Uh, you can see them on the screen on uh, between add-on two and three and between add-on four and five. This adds to the flexibility you have when defining your layers and helps with the confidence that all the add-ons will deploy in the expected order uh, with minimal, minimal remediations. Further down into the dependency system, I would like to talk about a small but very powerful feature of CRAN, and that's the version dependency system. We'll make a comparison uh, between the version dependency system and a non-version dependency system. Uh, we have, as an example, two layers, where layer X depends on layer Y. The dependency is needed because all the add-ons in layer X depend on cert manager from layer Y. Between the two layers, there is a, just a simple dependency relationship that allows layer X to start deployment only if the layer Y is already deployed to the cluster. Please also notice the versions of each layer. Uh, both of them being on version one at the moment. Uh, also, another thing to notice is that cert manager in layer Y is at version one at the moment. Given that both layers are applied at the same time, as soon as layer Y is deployed successfully, then layer X can start deployment as well. And it will come up, uh, it will complete the deployment successfully because add-on one, two, and three were able to create all the certificates they needed because cert manager was already installed. Now, let's, uh, in the scenario of an upgrade, um, we develop add-ons one, two, and three to use a new version of Cert Manager. We, they, they are, they're gonna be dependent on version V2. Okay, if we put those new add-ons in uh, the version two of layer X, uh, layer Y, we're gonna leave it as it is. Uh, 
that uh, it will have deployed cert manager v1 and that's it it's already deployed in a, it's in a deployed state so because the dependency relationship doesn't indicate a specific version the layer deployment will still go ahead so uh, layer x will start deployment because layer y is already deployed and of course the layer x deployment will fail uh, at deployment time add on one two and three uh, we're trying to create a new kind of certificate that only becomes available in Cert Manager v2. So how can we avoid these kind of errors? If we go back to the initial state, we can avoid the previous error by defining a version dependency relationship as follows. The first step is to, to say that layer X depends on layer Y at version v2. With this condition in place now, Cran won't start processing layer X v2 until layer Y v2 has been successfully deployed to the cluster. Uh, the current, in the current state, uh, layer Y V2 doesn't exist in the cluster, so layer X won't go ahead with deployment, won't go ahead with the upgrade. We'll have to, it will have to wait until we deploy layer Y version two to the cluster. Once that is done, you can see here, uh, set manager V2, once that layer is applied, it will complete successfully, uh, de deploy the deployment successfully, only at that stage, layer X will get the green light to deploy and complete successfully. All because now Cert Manager version two is deployed uh, by layer Y and add-on one, two, and three were able to create the certificates they needed. Another interesting feature of CRAN is that it is possible to change your deployment strategy and you can move an add-on from one layer to another without having to remove and reinstall the Helm chart. Uh, doing this, you can avoid any unwanted downtime of your applications or even worse, uh, potential data loss. An example for data loss would be if you want to change your deployment strategy. So with one of your add-ons uh, you are deploying has CRDs deployed as part of the Helm chart, removing the add-on could cause the CRD uh, to be deleted and all the related custom resources will be lost as well. So you don't, we don't want that. Uh, how can CRAN help in this scenario? So let's say you've defined uh, you've defined the layer Y to contain only two add-ons instead of three. So layer six, layer six, it's uh, now outside that layer, but you want to move it to layer X. So instead of uh, just deleting that add-on when it's removed from layer Y, uh, and instead of uh, adding the, the hand release file, applying the hand release file again because it's defined in layer X. Uh, CRAN is waiting for a period of time uh, before taking any action on this add-on. It's waiting for a period of time uh, and it will observe that, okay, layer X is now referencing this add-on. I'm not gonna apply the file. I'm gonna just change the referenced owner of this add-on. And it will simply uh, do that. And we call this the orphan and adopt feature. As I said earlier, this helps with unwanted application downtime or potential data loss while allowing you the flexibility to change your deployment strategy. Wait, what about uh, deleting an add-on? So it works in a similar fashion, only that if at the end of the grace period, no other layer is uh, adopting the add-on, uh, it will be marked for deletion. And whenever that grace period finishes, that will uh, now this will be the, the desired state is going to be reflected in the cluster. The add-on will be deleted. Yeah. So now, last but not least, I'd like to mention that CRAN is an open source project. So we'd be glad if you check it out on GitHub at github.com slash fidelity slash CRAN. Uh, that's where you can find the uh, all the, res the resources or the source codes of the CRAN controller, and also a Helm chart that can help you uh, deploy CRAN, the source controller, and the Helm controller, so you can start building layered platforms as well. I'd like to thank all of you very much for joining me for this talk, and I hope it has helped you in some way. Uh, I'll see you in the live Q&A section, and thank you again. Bye-bye.